Let us understand integer exponents in details, followed by some excellent examples and solving equations. I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my YouTube channel and the website Global Math Institute. In this video, we'll consider operations with integer exponents. When I say integer exponents, the exponent could be positive or negative, right? Integers, right? So if it is x to the power of minus n, it can be written as a reciprocal 1 over x to the power of n. Writing with n as the power with a positive integer is one of the criteria in which we have to provide the solutions. So in this exercise, we are taking up six different types of questions which relate to integer exponents. We'll begin with rewriting with positive exponents, single power with positive exponents, simplify and evaluate expressions, evaluate using laws of exponents, simplify using laws of exponents, and we are going to solve equations. So basically, the properties of exponents are, I think, clear to you. Anything to the power of zero is one, and when we have the same base and we multiply them, then the exponents get added. When we have power of power, then they get multiplied. When we are dividing one by the other, then the exponents get subtracted for the same base. And the focus is mainly on x to the power of minus n is equal to 1 over x to the power of n. We'll also consider the radicals x to the power of m over n, which really means it is the nth root when x is to the power of m. Now, let's begin with the very first question, which is write as an equivalent expression with positive exponents. It really means that if it is 11 to the power of minus 4, I'll simply write this as 1 over 11 to the power of 4. The negative here makes it a reciprocal. That is it, right? So the next one here, which is 1 over minus 5 to the power of minus 3. So minus make it reciprocal. So we get minus 5 to the power of 3. And with the negative, negative can be taken out. You could also write this as negative 5 cubed, right? Here, if we have 2 over 3 to the power of minus 3, in that case, what really happens is that you flip them and you can write them as 3 over 2, right, to the power of 3. So you clearly notice that whenever we have an exponent which is negative as it is in these particular cases, then we are writing the reciprocal, right? So now let's continue. And this time, the second question here is to write in single power with positive exponents. Now, it's an exercise which is very important since always the answers should be provided with positive exponents. So, we'll basically apply the rules. Same base, powers are 4 and minus 7, so they get added, right? So, we have 2 plus to the power of 4 plus minus 7, correct? So, that gives you 2 to the power of minus 3. Now, you have to write this as a positive exponent and therefore, the answer should be 2 cube in the denominator, right? I can write this as 1 over 8, but the whole idea is to write as a single power. And therefore, I'm not writing this as 1 over 8. You get the idea. Perfect. Next one here is 3 to the power of minus 3, 9 to the power of minus 2, 27 square. All of them can be written as... 3 to the power of something, you get the idea, right? So we could write this as 3 to the power of minus 3, and then we have 9 is 3 squared, right? So, so 3 squared to the power of minus 2, and 27 can be written as 3 cubed, right? So it becomes 3 cubed to the power of 2. Makes sense? So we can now see that I can have the same base, and therefore I can add all these exponents. Minus 3 from the first one, plus here they get multiplied, right? 2 times minus 2 gives me minus 4. And this is 3 times 2, 6. Since it is in the denominator, means divide, it will be minus 6. You get an idea, right? 
So we have 3 to the power of minus 3, minus 4, minus 6, which is 3 to the power of minus 13, right? So which is 3 to the power of minus 13, which I'll write this as 1 over 3 to the power of 13. Perfect. I hope it is absolutely clear, right? The next one here, we have the same base, which is 5, and the exponents are 7 and minus 8. Do you notice this particular bracket here? So all these terms are within the bracket, right? So, so the bracket actually takes care of all these terms. So now, let's do inside bracket first, which is 5 to the power of 7 minus 8. And then we have minus 1 here, right? So it is 5 to the power of minus 1 to the power of minus 1, which gives us 5 to the power of 1 itself. Normally, 1 is not written in the exponent, so we'll write this as 5. Make sense? Perfect? So that is how we are going to do it. Now, let's take a, another set of questions. Well, in case you want to learn from me, feel free to send an email on the address given. So let's continue. This time we need to evaluate show all steps. 1 over 8 to the power of minus 2. We'll write this as 8 to the power of 2. The negative made it reciprocal and 8 to the power of 2 is 64. Perfect. Then we have 2 to the power of minus 5 divided by 8 and we have 1 over 4 to the power of minus 3. So 2 to the power of minus 5 is 32 and we could write them in that form also, right? So, so now, let's see. Can we write them all as powers of 2 and then simplify? What do you say? So let's do like that. So we have 2 to the power of minus 5. So I'm going to write this as 1 over 2 to the power of 5 for now. 8 can be written as 2 cubed, perfect. And this 4 minus, right? So... 4 can be written as 2 square, right? So 2 and then we have square to the power of 3. So I'm cutting down on these steps. We have learned few concepts, right? You can apply them. 1 over 4 to the power of minus 3 is 4 to the power of minus 3 and 4 can be written as 2 square. Perfect. So we have here in the denominator, we have 2 to the power of 5 plus 3, which is 8. And in the numerator, we have... 2 to the power of 2 to the power of 3, which is 2 to the power of 6. Or, if we see that, we have 2 to the power of 6 minus 8, which is 2 to the power of minus 2. Or, I can write this as 1 over 2 square, which is 1 over 4. Correct. Anyway, you can do this question in many different ways, right? I took one path, you could take anything else, right? But the result will be 1 over 4. Perfect. The next one here is 2 over 5 times 1 over 2 squared to the power of minus 2. Now, how shall we do it? Well, square brackets, 2 over 5 is as such. I'm writing it. And 1 over 4 square, right? So it is like 1 over 4 squared is 16. We could write like this. We have to evaluate after all, correct? And this is to the power of minus 2. Now, we can simplify this, dividing by 2, we get 8 here, so we get 1 over 40, holes to the power of minus 2, which is 40 square, right? And 40 square is 1600. So that is how I could actually evaluate this particular question. So see, evaluate, I could have expanded them, written them in the standard form rather than the exponent form and also calculated the answer, right? You could do like that. Next, we need to simplify, express your answer with positive exponents, right? So basically, we'll apply the exponent rules. When you want to simplify, uh, numbers 2 and minus 5 can be multiplied together, right? So what do we get here? We get 2 times minus 5 as minus 10, and then p to the power of minus 3, and here we have minus 6. Let's add them up, right? So we get this as equal to minus 10. P to the power of minus 3 minus 6 is minus 9. That gives me minus 10 over P to the power of 9. Since we should write them with positive exponents. So far, so good, right? I think you've understood all these concepts. Now, 
I would like you to pause the video and answer these questions, right? Perfect. Now let's do the next one. We have 6, 8 to the power of minus 5, 8, 8 to the power of minus 2. So 8 and 6 can be simplified. So we could write this as dividing by 2, we get 3 over 4, right? Remember, a is to the power of minus 5, right? Not 6. So we have a here, minus 5, right? And since the other one is in the denominator, we'll do minus of that exponent. So we get 3 over 4, a to the power of minus 5 plus 2, which is minus 3, or we could write this as 3 over 4, a cube. Make sense? So that is how we could actually simplify the given expression. The next one here is 4ab squared and 3ba cubed. You could simplify within the bracket first. We have 4 over 3. a cancels with a and so we don't have a in the numerator. b cancels with b. We've got just b in the numerator and denominator gives us a squared to the power of minus 3. Minus is to both, right? So we'll flip everything inside. Perfect. And a becomes 2 times 3, 6, and b to the power of 3 will be our answer. Does make sense to you. Perfect. Have a good look at it. See the strategies which we are adopting to solve them. Right. Let's move forward. Here is a very interesting question. We need to evaluate each expression for a equals to minus 2, b equals to 3, n equals to minus 1. So we are given the expression here. Okay, so the expression here is 6 times b to the power of n. b is 3, right? So we'll write 3 to the power of n, right? And in the denominator, we have 8. a is minus 2. So I'm substituting minus 2 and minus 2 to the power of n. Well, I didn't substitute the value of n, which I should have, right? Anyway, let me just simplify 3 and 8. So when I do that, what do I get? Cancelling by... 2's, I get 3 and 4, right? So I get 3 over 4, right? So this is 3, this is 4 times. And we have 3 to the power of n is minus 1. So I'm substituting n minus 1 now, okay? I'm doing it at this stage. Okay, so we have this there. And then we have in the denominator, minus 2 to the power of minus 2 and n is minus 1, correct? So we have 3 over 4. And here we have 3 to the power of minus 1, which comes in the denominator. I'll write this as 1 over 3. And minus 2 to the power of plus 2, right? So we have 1 over minus 2 to the power of 2 times minus 1. You see that? 2 times mi minus 2 times minus 1 is plus 2. So it will square it, right? And therefore, we get our answer, which is 3 by 4. 1 by 3 times 1 by 3. 3 and 3 we can cancel. And we have 1 over 4, right? 1 over 4. So we have 1 over 16 as our answer for this particular question. Does it make sense to you? That is how we are going to do it. Now here is equations to be solved. So I think you have understood this strategy so far. Let's now look into the solution of these equations. Three of them and three more to go. We have 3 to the power of x minus 1 equals to 1 over 3. Now, 1 over 3 can be written as 3 to the power of minus 1. So, when we have the same base, in that case, we can write that the exponents are same. That is, x minus 1 is minus 1. Solving, we get x equals to minus 1 plus 1, and that gives me 0. So, x equals to 0 is our answer. You can substitute 0 here and figure out that it becomes 3 to the power of minus 1, which is 1 over 3. It makes sense, right? So that becomes the solution of this equation. Let's take up the next one. So you can write 8 as 2 cube, right? Perfect. So that means we have 4 to the power of 2x plus 1 equals to 2 to the power of minus 3. That means 2x plus 1 is equals to minus 3. 2x equals to minus 3 minus 1, which is minus 4. And x is equal to minus 4 over 2, which is minus 2. So the answer for the second one is minus 2. Is that clear to you? Perfect. Next one here, I like you to do it. 
4 to the power 2x plus 1 equals to 1 over 8. Very similar to one of those questions which we did just now. 1 over 8 means 2 to the power of minus 3. Correct. And now you can solve it by writing 2x plus 1 equals to minus 3. 2x equals to minus 3 minus 1, which is minus 4. And then x equals to minus 4 over 2, which is minus 2. Get the idea. So that is how we can actually solve it. Now, here are three more questions in which we have decimal values. Correct. 10 to the power of x equals to 0 0.01. Now, how do I write 0 0.01 as an exponent? Hmm, that's interesting. Next one. 8 to the power of x is 0 0.25. And then 25 to the power of minus x plus 1 is 5 square root 5. Hmm. How am I going to do this? Interesting. Let's make an attempt. We have 10 to the power of x equals to 0 0.01 is 100, right? It is 1 over 100, correct? So that means that is like uh, 1 over 10 square, right? So I could write this as 10 to the power of x is 10 to the power of minus 2 or x is equal to minus 2. Makes sense. That is how we are going to do it. I hope you are getting it all right. In case you want to learn from me, you can definitely send an email on the address given. Perfect. Next one here is 8 to the power of x. And then we have 0 0.25. Well, 8 to the power of x is 2 cubed and then x, right? Makes sense. And quarter, quarter is like 1 over 4, which is 1 over 2 square. Now, it gives you an idea, right? So, we have 2 to the power of 3x equals to 2 to the power of minus 2. And so, 3x equals to minus 2, and that gives you x as minus 2 over 3. Perfect. That is how you're going to find this answer. Hmm. So, I hope you are enjoying this journey. Last question is there before us. 25 to the power of minus x plus 1 and 5 square root 5. We are still to figure out. Okay. So, 25 is 5 square, right? So, 5 square times minus x plus 1. And here, 5. And this 5 is like 5 to the power of half. You get the idea, right? Square root is to the power of half. Okay. So, we get these exponents now, right? So, 5 to the power of minus 2x. <laughs> so we have, so we have 5 to the power of minus 2x plus 2 and here we have 5 to the power of 1 plus half which is 3 by 2. So I can write 2x plus 2 equals to 3 by 2. And then we can say 2x is equals to 2 minus 3 by 2, right? Which is 4 minus 3, which is half. And therefore, x is equal to 1 over 4, right? So I'm just squeezing it in. So x gets to be 1 over 4. So we get our answer, right? In this case, we got x equals to 1 over 4. In the previous case, we got x equals to minus 2 over 3. And the first one, we have x equals to minus 8. So with that, we have solved all our questions based on integer exponents, right? So integer exponents could be positive or negative integers, but we have to write the solutions with positive integers, right? Most of the time. So that is the criteria. So I hope with that, you have understood the concept. We have many other videos which are related to this. So check our playlist for more details. Thanks for your time and all the best.